Hello everyone, it's Letty and welcome to my channel. I am very excited for this conversation today. We are going to have a life talk because today, this very day, is my five year wedding anniversary. I have a lot to talk about. There's a lot of things that I have learned and gone through over the past five years and I'm very excited Hi. to share them with you. Please don't mind me. Hi. Hi, baby. Ah. Um, we are in for quite the conversation today. Definitely grab a coffee or a tea or something, a basket of laundry to fold, your sewing project, sketchbook, or whatever you're working on right now. We're going to be here for a while. We have a lot to talk about. Let's get to it. This is really helpful. Oh, this is when a coffee table would be very nice. Hello. The number one thing I want you to take away from this is that marriage is the biggest blessing. It is one of the greatest blessings God can give you. So please cherish it, respect your marriage, hold that as one of your biggest priorities right after your relationship with God comes your marriage. God first, marriage second, your kids come after. Seriously, your marriage comes before your kids. That might sound a bit absurd, especially when you have very small children who rely on you for literally everything. You're like, well, don't they obviously come first? Well, clearly their basic needs come first. But your marriage comes far before your relationship with your children. Hear me out. If you don't have a good marriage, you don't have good communication with your spouse, you don't have a good, loving, happy, comfortable relationship with your spouse in your home around your children, you're not showing them and teaching them a healthy relationship. Children learn from their parents. You want your kids to see what being a significant other is and what that means and how to care for your spouse. Then you need to demonstrate that. You can't just expect kids to know the ins and outs of marriage when you're not showing that to be a good spouse. Does that make sense? So that is why I would say that's the most important, is prioritizing your marriage. Because it's easy to put it on the back burner, right? Especially when you live together, you see each other every day. It's easy to just be like, mm, I can talk to you later. We can deal with this later. And then you deal with whatever is happening right now, and then your marriage keeps getting pushed back. And that's why problems don't get addressed and get solved. So, prioritize your marriage. Which, going with that, check in on your spouse regularly. Message each other throughout the day. It doesn't just have to be the mundane things of, what do you want for dinner? Do we have trash bags? It's things like that. But just check in. How are we doing today? Is your day good? Did you enjoy your lunch? Love you. Thinking about you. Things like that. Just next. Nice. You know that you have 21st to meet someone. You get all the butterflies and sparks start flying and you talk about anything and everything all the time. And that does not stay forever. Because you're, like I just said, you get used to that. See you when you get home. And don't continue that talking all the time about anything and everything. Which you should be doing. That needs to continue. That's why people say continue dating your spouse. Keep, keep active in your marriage. When you get into a one, a bum, a owie, owie. A difficult season of life. Mwah. I see, baby. Good job. Anything of the sort. When you're feeling unloved, when you're feeling unappreciated, 
or out of touch with your spouse, chances oh, are they yeah. most likely feel the exact same way. So check in on them. I know what I feel like I don't have enough time with my spouse. I feel like I'm missing my spouse and I don't spend a lot of time with them. Nine out of ten times my husband is feeling the exact same way. So instead of getting kind of grouchy about it, you just say, hey, I miss you, we need a date night. If prioritizing date night works for you, and having a weekly date night, do not oh, worry. And mama, glory. Wow. If maybe writing little notes and letters to each other, and a book, keeping each other updated on, just try that. Try number. Try writing thank yous and gratitudes and expressing appreciation. And your gratitude is so important. <laughs> Even for those little things like going grocery shopping or doing the laundry, you gotta recognize the sacrifices and appreciate them. Like working all the time, spending all day with the kid. Just express your appreciation to your spouse. Thank you for a cup of coffee. We work every fucking day this week. Thank you for paying our bills. Thank you for filling the car with gas. Simple little things. It's called gratitude. It's respectful to appreciate things people do for you. And when you show that to your kids and express gratitude, they will then express gratitude because they see you doing it all the time. Hey, I'm me. Me? I'm me. Me. I'm me. You are you. That's right. Which kind of goes along with always taking your spouse into consideration. Oh no! We don't work, no. We, don't we don't work against each other. We work with each other. No! So, oh no! Into consideration. Yeah. Obviously. I obviously have to do that for, for big things, but do that for little things too. Try to go out of your way to take your spouse into consideration. Even though I'm exhausted, I know my spouse will greatly appreciate me making him a cup of coffee, or giving him a football, or setting out his clothes for work in the morning so that way he doesn't go rummage through the closet to grab his clothes or just something simple. Those little things where you take your spouse into consideration mean a lot and they go a long way. One of the most important lessons I have learned over the past five years is play fair and fight clean. But be nice to your spouse. You don't need to hurl insults and profanity. Mama! Don't bring up the past. Don't bring up every tiny little thing and just nag and nitpick and be hey. forced. <laughs> Move on. Learn. Speak your flippin' piece politely. What? Come to a compromise hey. solution. And grow together. You're a team. Grow and learn together. To be honest and be open. Tell your spouse how you feel, how we came to be in situation, how you would like things to change or improve, or what no longer works for you. Pray. Pray for your spouse. Hey. It goes a long way. Hey. biggest mistakes I've made is taking my problems out on my spouse. Definitely do not deserve that. Even though your spouse is your safe place. Kind of like when you're a teenager and you get angry and you start yelling at your mom. It's like it's your mom. Where'd she get to go? You kind of doing that with your spouse sometimes. And I warn you not to do that. Please don't take your problems out on your spouse. Like I said, play fair. Don't speak to each other, don't spare each other, don't bring up the past BS. None of that matters anymore. You learn, grow, and 
Taking my problems out on my spouse, but also with Drew. I'm someone who withdraws. I go inward when I'm not okay, when I'm not happy, and just I clam up, I shut down, and that's not helpful for anybody. It makes me feel very lonely, it makes my spouse feel lonely, it makes him feel like he's doing bad, and really it's just me. I'm not the one who's handling my son and my situation appropriately, and it's now spreading. That's not good. She kind of fell with blaming and pointing the finger. There's no need to play the blame game. Everybody makes mistakes. There are seasons of life that are yeah. difficult, but we will go through them and grow together. Like I said, me on your spouse. That is one of the the biggest thing that I have learned over the past five years is that my husband is my rock. I love him dearly. He's the most important person in my life. And he's my person I should be going to him for everything. But instead, I withdraw and I shut down and I point the finger and blame and play dirty. And that's not good. That's really bad. Don't do it. It's childish. It's immature. It doesn't help anybody. Just don't do it. Just speak your peace politely. Say what you feel, what you experienced. And talk it out. Oh, like adults. Oh, I don't want I just don't have a voice. My feelings, my expectations, my some reason I expect my spouse to just know like what I need or what I want from him oh without just telling him by not vocalizing my struggles, my feelings and worries and needs but for some reason having this bizarre expectation that my husband can meet my needs and my desires without even vocalizing them to me which is so stupid. Because that is something I find this thing on. I love that he's actually very he's pretty good at expressing his needs and his wants. Or I am not, so I didn't learn that from him. <laughs> learn from your spouse. You can learn a lot from each other. Speak each other's love language. And I have the same love language, and we speak very well to each other because that's just how we are. That was dumb. But that's not the case for every couple. So, learn each other's love language and learn your own. Just speak each other's love language. Making each other feel loved and appreciated is extremely important in marriage. Look in the mirror. You are not a perfect person. I am not a perfect person. We should never expect our spouses to be perfect people, which sometimes we can get in our head that they're not doing this or their spoke said that spoke to me this way. But all these little things that we get on the brain, especially when we're in like a bad mood, if we are sleep deprived or we're hungry or whatever. We're lacking our needs, we get very bitter and mean. <laughs> so, you look in the mirror first, you recognize what's wrong with you, and focus on yourself. So, look in the mirror, recognize what's wrong with you first, before ever pointing a finger at anybody else, especially with your significant mother. Apologize. Please, 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 for the love of God. You don't apologize to your spouse. Just, you know how we want our children to apologize when they make mistakes or when they're mean or have bad behavior or whatever? And it's our job to apologize to them when we snap 
Guys are always warming into them for no reason. Same thing with our spouse. If we want to teach our children how to apologize when they make mistakes, we need to be apologizing when we make mistakes when we're mean. When we're caught up in the moment, express your sincere sorry to your spouse and then change your behavior. Going along with that is Mom, listening. Listen to your spouse. They want to tell you how bad their day was. They want to tell you something that's bothering them, something they have a problem with. If they don't like something or just something they want to express their thoughts. Usually it's not something. Maybe they found something very fascinating that they want to talk about. Shut up and listen to them. It's not about you for five seconds. Just listen to your spouse. Not that hard. Listening is one of the most important things in communication. If you can't communicate, you're never going to get anywhere in life. Actively listening, changing your behavior when you need to, expressing things as well as you can. When your spouse is talking, listen. Make that the priority. Focus solely on them and actively listen to what they're trying to tell you. It's respectful. It's valuable. It's how we want someone to act when you're talking to them. Simply replicate that. And be a good example for your children. Listen and communicate well. Communication is key. Cheers. Something nice for your spouse. Just write them a sweet note. Expressing your appreciation. Make sure you give them a kiss and a hug every time they come home. When you see each other, just stop what you're doing. Give each other a hug and give each other a kiss. what it is, but when my husband comes home and I don't drop what I'm doing and immediately hug him, I am sad. I feel a little empty. I was just away from him for so long while he was at work. I want to embrace him. I love him. I'm happy that he's home. He's home safe and sound. What a beautiful answered prayer. I am excited. I am going to hug him with my spouse. When I wake up, I want to go to bed. He comes home before he leaves work. I'm just going to stop what I'm doing, acknowledge him, express my love for him. Why wouldn't I do that? All right, my kids are going crazy. I need to wrap this up. I need to head to the store to get some stuff for dinner so I can cook my up some bread. So, puzzle top. Pushed it five, a half a decade, five years. You and your spouse are celebrating an anniversary. Happy anniversary to you. Little cheers. Thank you everyone for being here today. I greatly appreciate it. Stay groovy. I love you.